Here's the 12P battery block. Let's hack it. We'll break this top plate and we'll make a 6P2S battery block. We'll start by putting in cells. These are all positives up. Okay, now we'll go negatives up. Of course, like all battery blocks, you can use cells that still have the spot welded tabs on them if you want. Cells like, like this. They fit right in there just fine. Okay, now that we've got this, we'll line the arrows up and the arrows up. Notice, of course, that the break in the metal plate coincides with the reversal of the polarity of the cells. We'll put it on. And now we have a 6P 2S battery. All right, let's put some bolts in it. We know this side is a power side, and we know that this side is a power side. One's positive and one's negative, okay? We'll put those two in. They've got ring terminals on them. These are 10 to 12 gauge ring terminals, and they come with all battery blocks. The center here has got a gap, and this bolt goes right through the gap. This gap is important, and this nylon bolt's important, because if these two plates were to touch, there would be a short. That assures that they will not. Then we have these sensor terminals. These little sensor uh, ring terminals come with all battery blocks, enough to make your battery. And we'll put one of these in here, too, just for good measure. All right. We'll type, putting on some, put some washers on. <clears throat> Putting little tiny nylon nuts on can be fidgety unless you just press the nylon nut against the plate and turn the head of the bolt Then they do not cross thread. And finally we tighten it up with a nut driver. I'm holding the terminal here straight while I'm tightening and the head of this bolt. You don't need a wrench on the other side. You can hold it with your fingers. It'll tighten up just fine. I prefer to tighten these guys up by hand. I, I like the feeling better than with a power tool. You want to get snug, but not too snug, as, as they say. Okay, there we go. It's done. We've just made a 6P 2S battery. These cells, you can rotate them, that's normal, but they're quite snug. <clears throat> like all battery blocks, you can hook the next one to it using through bolts. More typically, probably, you'd use a piece of threaded rod like this to go through and hold, let's say, five or six of these in series. Let's put some power to it and see how much current it draws. And here we have a 6P 2S battery block. We've got the Queen Bee cells in it. We're going to hook it up to this Tenergy watt and power meter. We're going to watch the amps here and the watts down there. This Tenergy needs more than, you know, the, the voltage this battery can supply to run, this 3.5 volts. So we've got it hooked up to this 7-volt um, battery block. And these are the resistors that it's powering. That's the load. All right, let's hook it up. Well, it's hooked up. And holy cow, we're getting 69 amps at 262 watts. 67 amps. It's settling in. This guy is really putting out the power. Yep. Starting to get a little bit warm, starting to get a little bit warm, starting to get a little bit warm. That's kind of what you'd expect for that much power. 
Let's check the temperatures. 95. 160. Yeah, these blocks are these these batteries are working as hard as they can right now. That's a lot. But you can see the blocks remain cool. They remain cooler. They're not contributing to the heat of the battery. That's what's causing everything to heat up. So the blocks don't have much resistance. They can easily handle this current. Coming back over here and taking a look, the Tenergy is still up in the high 50s amps, 198 watts, not bad for a 2S 7 volt battery. And the resistors are smoking at 307 degrees. Well, time to end this experiment.